Hey, listen. Listen, I don't got a lot of time, but I, I want to first and foremost thank you all for being out here. I, I really want to I really want to tell you how much I appreciate, how much my colleagues appreciate. When you guys come down, it's, it's always the same thing. You're, you're polite, you're professional, you go around, you, you allow other people to, to speak with different points of view. Uh, you can see that we had one demonstration of somebody that was all about coming down into an area that you reserved in order to try to disrupt what you were doing. I've never seen you guys do that to other groups, right? Here, here's what this comes here's what this really comes down to and and I, I hope anybody that's listening to this I obviously understand that this group primarily is going to agree with everything I'm about to say but what I'm hoping is anybody that is is confused about why this issue is so important to us I, I hope this at least assists on some level because there's this idea that Americans Virginians whoever it is were just obsessed with guns when in when in reality if you actually look at the philosophy behind why we're here what we're truly obsessed with is the idea of individual liberty and personal responsibility. When, when you look at the Second Amendment, I, I, I get in constant debates with people that want to say, but it says a well-regulated militia, Nick, a well-regulated militia. Like, okay, do you know why it says that? It's, it says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. See, the founders recognized a couple of things within the Second Amendment and crafted it very specifically that way for a couple of reasons. One, our founders universally recognized the right of an individual, the right of a free person to be able to de defend themselves and their families. But they also recognized it was actually necessary to the security of a free state. But you can't have a free country ultimately if the citizens in that country are completely dependent upon the government for their protection. So the Second Amendment, Article 1, Section 13 of the Virginia Constitution is not about hunting, it's not about gun collecting, it's not about any of that. It is so much deeper because it is that fundamental recognition that if you want to be free, and if you want to live in a free country, then yes, you as a citizen do need to take personal responsibility both for your family, both for your property, but also for the sort of country that you want to live in. And you can't completely outsource your defense to somebody else. You can't outsource the responsibility to protect your family to somebody else. And I think what this really comes down to is ultimately it's an issue of trust. Because I've been told so many times whether I've spoke on that floor, whether I've gone on social media to discuss it, and every single time I've said, they want to confiscate firearms. And I get told repeatedly, Nick, you're lying. Nobody wants to take your guns. We just want common sense gun control. But then the moment they're in power, the moment they're in power, HB2 takes your guns effectively takes your guns. That's what it does. That's not me lying. That's not me reading into it. That's just reality. So here's the question. Should we trust when we get told nobody wants to take your firearms? Because, because the same people that are saying that are now trying to do it. And ultimately what this comes down to is this. It's Nick, trust us to provide for your security even though we lied to you about what we actually want to do. So why would I trust them? I, I shouldn't have any obligation to do so. Logically, I should not have any obligation to do so. Because if they want to point to the instances, the very, very, again, if we're, if we're talking about the entire population of the United States, if they want to point to the instances where a civilian uses a firearm for a nefarious purpose, can we then compare all the times governments have used firearms against unarmed populations for nefarious purposes? Yeah. Does that get to factor into the equation at all as we look at this? As you ask us to hand over our means to be able to protect ourselves? I think it should if we're going to make an intellectually honest and consistent argument. Because ultimately, and I think a lot of people understand this, and I'm going to say the quiet part out loud. In the United States, we have a proud tradition of civil disobedience when necessary. We're, we're about to celebrate some of that civil disobedience today on Martin Luther King Day. And it needs to be understood that this isn't about us handing over a firearm or a magazine. This is about you telling us that you're going to take away our means to be able to provide for our own security as well as provide for a free state. And if you don't trust us 
to be able to provide for our security, then why in the hell should I trust you to provide it for me? Because ultimately, ultimately, I know, we all know, it's not like law enforcement has the capability or even the obligation to post someone outside each of our houses to make sure that our property and our rights are preserved. They can't do that. And so if you're not going to do that, if you're not going to be responsible for my security, then what gives you any right to diminish my ability to provide for my own security? Again, this is just logical thinking. And the reason why it's so far out of style right now is because, again, I'm getting to the point where I no longer trust, not that I ever really did, but I no longer trust the arguments that are being used to try to convince me for why it's okay for them to confiscate my property and to confiscate that property which is supposed to be constitutionally protected. So ultimately, here's what it comes down to. I'm a citizen. I'm not a subject. Yeah. I'm not going to be a subject. I have sworn multiple oaths to defend my country, both as a soldier and as a legislator. I intend to stand by those oaths. I expect my fellow legislators to stand by those oaths. I expect everybody who has ever sworn one of those oaths to stand by those oaths. Because ultimately, that's what secures a free state. And the most, the most unique thing about the American experiment is not democracy. Democracies have existed all throughout space and time. We are a federated constitutional republic that uses democratic processes. We respect those democratic processes. But I want to say this last part in closing, what this ultimately comes down to is the most unique thing about the American experiment was that we put our faith and trust in the individual citizen, not the state. And if we're going to, if we're going to keep that, if we're going to make sure that that's what is the, the, the reputation, if that what is the, the actual existence of the United States and what it means to be a citizen, then ultimately it's going to be on us. It's going to be on us to make sure that we do that. It's not a responsibility we can delegate to legislators. That's part of the process. It's not the totality of it. So make sure that you are defending your rights and that you are effectively advocating for them. Thank you very much. Yeah.